Major markets climbed higher yet again last week as all five indices closed in the green. This news was especially exciting for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, which both saw new all-time highs. The S&P 500 crossed the 3500 threshold for the first time ever on Thursday and added almost as much as the NASDAQ for the week. Last week's gains caused the Dow Jones and the MSCI emerging markets to cross back into positive territory for the year. Yet the NASDAQ still remains the top performer year-to-date, with a year-to-date gain just over 30%. The positive results span capitalizations as well as sectors. The top performing sectors were the S&P Communication Services, followed by the Information Technology and Financial Sectors. Financials benefited from a steepening yield curve that took the 10 and 30 year to 74 and 152 basis points respectively. Interest rates rose following comments from the Federal Open Market Committee's Thursday meeting, which addressed inflation targets through the updated Statement on Longer Run Goals and Monetary Policy Strategy. In this statement, the Fed reaffirmed its judgment that inflation at the rate of 2%, as measured by the annual change in the price index for personal consumption expenditures, is most consistent over the longer run with the Federal Reserve's statutory mandate. However, what caught the attention of many analysts was the later caveat that, in order to anchor longer-term inflation expectations at this level, the committee seeks to achieve inflation that averages 2% over time, and therefore judges that, following periods when inflation has been running persistently below 2%, appropriate monetary policy will likely aim to achieve inflation moderately above 2% for some time. In other words, the Fed would allow the PCE inflation measure to exceed 2% for a time after a period like what we have been in recently, when the inflation rate was well below 2%. Many analysts expect that this accommodating policy by the Fed will likely keep the Fed funds rate low for the foreseeable future. This creates an interesting environment for the Fed, as they have been focused on raising the Fed funds rate as recently as December of 2018 with the peak of the effective funds rate just surpassing 2.4%, back when at least one measure of inflation still pegged at around 1.5%. Not surprisingly, the CME Group's FedWatch tool anticipates that the target range will remain from 0 to 25 basis points for months to come.